and Behind the Ears podcast crew would like to thank the following sponsors for their generous support. If you have a little one and you're going to Walt Disney World, you're going to need a stroller. I'll tell you what, kingdomstrollers.com is the place where you want to look into. I'll tell you, you know, I've destroyed my fair share of strollers while, while at Walt Disney World, and those things are not cheap. But getting something from kingdomstrollers.com, they'll be able to help you pick out the perfect stroller for you. And the nice part is, is that because they're a Disney preferred provider, they'll be able to drop it at no charge. So if you don't want to necessarily destroy your stroller in the process, and you want to have a great Disney vacation with your little one, contact kingdomstrollers.com and they'll set you right up. That's kingdomstrollers.com. Do you want to save around 40% off Disney's prices for deluxe on-property accommodations? Contact dvc-rental.com. They help out Disney Vacation Club owners rent out points that they're not going to use. These points mean savings for you on your next trip at Walt Disney World, Disneyland, Vero Beach, Florida, and Hilton Head Island in South Carolina. The DVC member books everything in your name, just like any other reservation. And if you ever decide that you want to become a DVC member, you can check out our sister company, buyandselldvc.com. As a licensed realtor, they sell DVC contracts for members at a savings of 30 to 40% off Disney's prices. And if you're looking to sell your contract, buyandselldvc.com has one of the industry's lowest commissions at only 6.5%. Again, that's dvc-rental.com for your rental needs and buyandselldvc.com to buy or sell into the Disney Vacation Club at a large discount. And make sure you tell them that the Behind Ears podcast crew sent you. Hey everybody, it's Mr. Chris, and I gotta tell you about Expedition Roasters. Listen, I'm a, I'm a pretty big coffee drinker, just like a lot of you are, but these people have got coffee right. Their coffees are made from selectively sourced premium and specialty grade Arabica beans. They provide the absolute best flavor and aroma, and select roasts even come directly from a single estate farm for a truly perfect cup that is never bitter. They've got awesome Disney-inspired flavors, such as Roundhouse Roast, Route 66, Skipper's Brew, Dark Side Roast, Redhead Rum, and one of my favorites, Bob Slitter's Brew. Listen, if you want to have the taste of Disney in every cup, give them a try today. ExpeditionRoasters.com and Behind the Ears podcast listeners get an extra 20% off your first order by using the coupon code EARS20. That's right, E-A-R-S-2-0. And you can find them over at ExpeditionRoasters.com. Brew your happy place. You're listening to the Behind Ears Podcast, because everybody does Disney differently. And welcome back to another episode of the Behind Ears Podcast. I am your host, Mr. Chris, and I'm actually going to most likely do something of a solo show today, because Uncle Danny is out on special emergency assignment. We hope that he's able to come back really super quick. Anyway... I'm really glad to have everybody here tonight. We are broadcasting live from our Facebook page as well as our YouTube channel. That's right. Now you can catch it at two different places at the same time. Absolutely the same show. And it just depends on where you'd like to go and catch it. That's Behind Yours Podcast Facebook page over at our YouTube channel, which is also Behind Yours Podcast. And I've even put a link out there in the comment section of both YouTube and Facebook that if anybody would like to join me from a computer this evening, I'd be more than happy to have you pop on, ask a question, make a comment, say hi. I think that would be totally awesome. So there are a couple things that I wanted to bring up today. And, you know, it's always more fun when I talk about these things with Danny. And we may actually touch on these things a little bit later with him as he joins us. And that's a couple things. I walk down this morning. And every morning I make my make my son breakfast and so on and so forth. And the news is usually on the TV. And first thing I heard was about how a gondola was stuck over at, I believe, SeaWorld in California. And I I stopped. <clears throat> excuse me. I stopped in my tracks. 
And I basically was like, wait, wait, what, what? Back it up. And to find out that, yes, it was true. What, you know, there was, there was a gondola that was stuck, uh, you know, on the other side of the country. And it was because of a, a huge wind that kind of blew it. But you know what? There was one thing that they said that really caught my attention. And that was that, you know, nobody got hurt. They were stuck there for a little bit. The rescue teams were able to take care of it easily and efficiently, mainly because they have trained, they have drilled for those particular instances, for those particular items, which I think actually, you know, puts a little bit of uh, easement to, you know, my mind, because let's face it, I know that there have been some people that, you know, some people have basically said, oh, heck to the no, that they don't want to deal with the gondolas mainly because, um, mainly because, you know, they're just scared that they're going to get stuck at, you know, 30 some feet in the air. And I, I'll admit, eh, I, I, I kind of would be too in some ways, but, you know, seeing something like this happen and seeing that nothing really came out of it other than some people were stuck up there for a little bit. No one got hurt. Everybody was taken care of. I think, you know, it's one of those cases where, what do you do? You know, does it, does it make you not want to do the gondolas when they come over to Disney or is one of those things that, you know, you have confidence in what they're doing? Uh, go ahead and make some comments either on, on the Facebook page or the um, YouTube channel. I'd really like to have a good understanding as to what you think a little bit about it. As I said, personally, I don't really have an issue with it, but I'd also like to hear what your comments are in regards to that as well. Um, as mentioned, I have put a link into the comments that if you'd like to join me from your computer, feel free to let me know by clicking on that link, filling out the couple little fields that you need to fill out. And I will see you pop up on my screen and I'll bring you into the conversation. So let's talk about this for a minute. <clears throat> I know that there are some people that really can't stand Disney transportation. I myself am a Disney transportation nut. I love Disney transportation. I don't want to drive my car anywhere. And to be honest, it wasn't until uh, a couple summers ago that I actually started doing things like using Uber or the minivan system. Mainly because, you know, quite honestly, I don't want to drive when I'm on vacation. I really don't. I really don't want to drive home on vacation. I don't, I don't want to have to deal with the traffic. I don't want to have to deal with it. And I personally don't have any issues with, you know, the buses. I don't have any issues with the watercraft. I don't have any issues with the monorails. And I, the gondolas, I'll be honest with you, I don't have any issues. And when I was a little kid, I do remember going the Skyway between Tomorrowland and Fantasyland. And when I went there for the first time with my family, I really was disappointed that they took it down. And because that was something that I remember doing with my mom. And that was a real cherished memory. And I look forward to actually doing the Skyliner. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a Disney podcaster and everything else like that. I really do have a desire to ride on the gondola. I, I really want to see what it's about. I want to give an honest to goodness review of it. I really want to be able to tell people my opinion, which is going to be really, you know, unbiased in my opinion. I want to see that what that's like. Now there's a, a couple comments here in the screens already. Uh, Leslie saying, yeah, that was something. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it was. Uh, Mary basically says, I don't have any desire to get into a gondola. Um, Darren saying, I will not be using them. Uh, let's see. And uh, Leslie also continues saying something. I never did ride the Skyliner when I was at the Magic Kingdom back many moons ago. Um, Mary, but Mary is also basically saying, you know, hey, we were staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge in January and the buses were great. And, you know, I don't usually have any issues with buses, to be honest with you. And we tend to stay at resorts that are not necessarily on the monorail or not necessarily within walking distance of Epcot. Because if you think about it, if you're at the 
Beach Club, Yacht Club, Boardwalk, you're walking to Hollywood Studios. You're walking to Epcot. You know, if you're on a monorail resort, I think it's kind of obvious. You're taking a monorail over the Magic Kingdom with maybe the exception of uh, those that are at the Contemporary or Bay Lake Tower. Because literally, you're going to walk there faster than taking the monorail. And I love doing that, to be honest with you. It's really, really super cool. Um, Ryan asks the question, is it true that there's no air conditioning? Yeah, there's no air conditioning. But you also have to stop and think about it for a second. How are they going to do that? And, and there's, this has been an argument over and over and over again. Because, you know, the last thing I heard, there, there is going to be some, no AC whatsoever. There's going to be passive cooling. It's going to have, I mean, you're going to be moving at quite a clip. And so you're going to get a breeze while you're in there. Now I know you're thinking the same thing I'm thinking. It's Florida. It's sun. And it's not going to be necessarily super enclosed. It's going to be hot. Yes, I would agree with that. And I want, that's one of the reasons why I want to ride it. I want to see how it really is going to work when it's really hot outside. I really have a good desire and I want to give it an honest to goodness trial. I want to go there when it's 95 degrees outside and 145% humidity. I want to go in the middle of August when it's, you know, like, you know, hell's back door in Florida. Sorry, Floridians. Y'all know I'm telling you the truth. I, I want to give that a try because, well, let's face it. They use these gondola systems elsewhere in this world. But, you know, we all know what Florida is like. And we all know that if there's no air, not enough air circulation, it's going to be horrible. And you're supposed to be going at a nice little clip. So we'll have to see how that goes. I myself am looking forward to it. I think people should give it a try if the heat is like the only thing keeping you away from it. You're not going to be on there for like half an hour. I mean, it's not going to, it's what I understand, it's only supposed to take, you know, under 10 minutes to get from one point to another. But, and I say under 10 minutes, I'm, I'm saying, you know, quite a bit under 10 minutes. We'll have to see how it goes. Jamie makes the comment, it's going to happen. Problems with, the, problems with the Skyliner. I do believe Disney is working 110% to get it right. But anything made by human hands will have problems. I think it'll be preferred method of travel for a few resorts soon. Looking forward to trying them out. I, I agree, Jamie. I mean, not just because you're talking about that to me. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that as well. I think it's a fair shake. And, you know, at the same time, you know that when they get that going, it's going to be a crowded novelty. And it's not going to replace the buses for those resorts for which it serves. It can't be. It will never take it all the way over because the volume won't be able to take it over. You know, it's just, I just think it's one of those one of those things where people are making too much of a big deal out of it until they try it. I, think about it this way. People didn't want to go to Pandora either. And yet those people were like and saying that it's the best thing, best thing that they've ever done is go to Pandora and ride Flight of Passage. Got to kind of think about it. You know, never say never in the Disney realm is what I say, because you never know when all of a sudden you're going to be just blown away about how, Disney implement something. That's just my that's just my son, my two cents, my take on it. Uh let's see. Yeah, <laughs> Leslie says, uh, I'll ride the monorail just like I'm just another ride every time I go. You and my wife, Leslie, would get along just fine. It's just in one of those cases because my wife is an absolute monorail nut. It is really cool. Um let's see. Looking over at the uh, YouTube channel, some people are like, yeah, try to get me off Disney from the air. Here I come. Uh, that's funny. Uh, that's from Brian. Uh, let's see. Looking at some of the other comments. Um, Steven's saying, I hope it's running in October. I hope so, too. Uh, let's see. Bailey's like, no way. I hated the ones at Six Flags in New Jersey, and I hate heights, so it's a no-go for me. Uh, though the Guardians one is tempting. Ha ha. You know, the interesting thing is this. I mean... If you're afraid of heights, this isn't going to change anything. I mean, 
to me. I mean, if you're afraid of heights, you're afraid of heights. And you're going to be moving. So you're going to be moving at height. So, yeah, if you're afraid of heights, I wouldn't recommend it. I, I really wouldn't. I, I just makes sense, right? Um, I think people should still go ahead and give it a shot. But at the same time, it's also one of those cases where, you know, you you don't know. <laughs> if I was afraid of heights, I wouldn't be on it. I'm not super awesome at heights. But I can't say that because I love to fly. I love I love the balloon over at Disney Springs. I guess I feel safe when I know that I'm not going to fall, and I don't think I have that problem with those particular uh, particular um, those particular forms of transportation or recreation for that matter. Uh, Jimmy says buses are crowded, but always manageable. Let them drive. I like that idea. Uh, let's see. Jessica says, Hey, we normally stay at pops at pop. So the gondolas might be in our future. Uh, let's see. Wendy basically says, I love the skyline in the magic kingdom, but it's different as a ride versus a form of transportation. That's a good point because this is a form of transportation, but you know, you're not going to have anything any less safe just because it's a ride. You know, it is, I mean, even the ride was a form of transportation and it's, it's both just like some people think that the monorail is both a ride and a transport piece of transportation. You'd both be right. So I think that would, I think that makes a, a, a big difference in my opinion. And so, so therefore I look forward to seeing that as well. Wendy, I think that would be a, a good way of looking at it. Jamie says the Skylander should move about 15 miles an hour. That's pretty quick with semi-open windows for ventilation. And Jamie, you know, I, I'm not sure exactly how fast it's supposed to be going, but it, I know it's supposed to go at a decent clip. And even if it goes 10 miles an hour, 10 miles an hour plus any other breeze that's already there, you know, th those kinds of things add to each other. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a nice little breeze to go through there. So we'll have to see how it goes. Um... Let's see. Ryan says, I'll definitely try it on my September trip if it's up. If not, December when we go. Uh, I think it'll probably be more like your December trip from, you know, what people have been speculating. I know that they're uh, they're doing some pretty solid testing and they're going to be doing some testing throughout the summer. I, I've said that before. I'll say it again. This is only my own personal speculation. They're going to use those summer months to test the living snot out of it. And they're not only going to test safety, they're going to test scenarios, they're going to test temperature, they're going to test everything to make sure that it's a really good uh, guest experience. That's my two cents. I don't know what exactly they're going to do, but I have a feeling that's going to be the case. So I totally, completely agree with that. Let's see. Uh, Leslie also mentions places closed down during the month of August in small towns in Florida. Yeah. Cause it's hot. Hey, Justin, how you doing? He says, hello, Mr. Chris. Uh, let's see. Chris also says it just surprises me that with such, such an ex extravagant setup that they have built these carts that they have decided not to go to the extra mile to install air conditioning. Yeah. You know, it, you know, there's a way of looking at this simplicity if you don't have air conditioning you don't have something extra that breaks maybe you don't have extra electrical load or an electrical system that you have to worry about um you also could probably put more on one cable because you have a certain amount of weight limitations air, con air conditioning systems are generally heavy um you know that's what I'm kind of thinking. But here's something that Justin says. He goes, I just rode the same gondola here in Colorado that Disney will be using. He's like, we had a 30 mile an hour wind and the gondola barely swung. Think about that. Think about that for a minute. You know, there are other places that use these very same gondolas. And if, you know, Justin's been a long time listener of the show and, you know, quite honestly, I, I think that's a really good observation that you made. If they're the same ones, 30 mile an hour wind is a nice brisk wind. I mean, 30 mile an hour wind, you're knocking over an empty garbage can if you're not careful. 
you know, that makes a lot of sense. So that should be kind of interesting. And uh, Darren's like, it's pretty high. Yeah, it's going to be pretty, it's going to be pretty high. You know, that's, I don't think that's going to really be a problem. Uh, let's see. Flipping through. Yep. I mean, that's just my take on it as well. So let's see. And uh, can't remember. I'm sorry. I'm, I know that I'm on YouTube. On YouTube, there's some uh, other comments. Someone's asking, where am I reading my chat from? It's over on the Facebook page. I tend to flip over between YouTube and Facebook to get different comments and read them here on the show. So here's the deal. As mentioned in the chat, towards the beginning of the chat, I put a link there. And if you are watching us from a computer, like a, like a laptop uh, with a webcam or a computer with a webcam, you are more than welcome to join. I even think that you don't even need technically a webcam. As long as you have a microphone, you might be able to, to join in, especially if you wanted to ask a question. I'll see you pop up on my screen and I'll see about if you wanted to come on for a minute to ask a question or have a comment. So I kind of wanted to um, also take a moment here uh, to kind of go through one of our one of our viewer questions here that uh, came from Ryan. And I'm going to go up here. I'm hoping I can actually get to it. Oh, no. I can't get all the way to the top of the th question thread. Darn, 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 darn. Let me see if I can see it here. So Ryan, I think, was asking the question whether or not I believe whether or not I believe that DVC members or annual pass holders should be able to get fast passes at more than one park per day. Hmm. I'm kind of sitting here wondering whether or not I want to wait until Danny gets back to answer that question. I'd love to hear his, I would love to hear what he has to say about this. I don't know if it'd be fair for me to talk about it and not have him talk about it as well. I, I really, really kind of wonder about that as a DVC member and as a former pass holder, I kind of wonder if, I kind of wonder if that would really be a good idea. I'll tell you why. Right now, there's there's already enough competition trying to get different passes or trying to get fast passes and so on and so forth. And I kind of believe in the idea of, I'll say, guest equality. Okay. Not necessarily going to be a popular opinion here. I'll, I'll be honest with you, but this is my opinion. What you do for one, I think you should probably do for all. So if you have a set of, if you have a set of guides, guidelines, so to speak, you have a set of rules or process, shouldn't it be the same for pretty much everybody? See, even if, as a DVC member, I don't necessarily believe that I should get special treatment because I'm a DVC member. Um, when I bought into the Disney Vacation Club, I bought in because I wanted a discount, overall discount on my lodging. Any perks were extra. The lodging is what I wanted to have. And I think that is what I get. I get a fantastic deal on my lodging, you know, basically paying, you know, for, for what I pay, I basically get deluxe accommodations for value price or even less than value price. That's all I expect as out of a D, out of being a DVC member. That's really kind of what it comes down to. That's all I expect as a DVC member. As a pass holder, you know, I think this is more of an issue for pass holders than than DVC members to be honest with you because they tend to go often and it's even more so the case if you're um, a Florida resident. 
mainly because obviously you're not only going often, but you're possibly even going weekly. I mean, there's several people in, uh, in our community that, uh, I think there's, you know, there are different people in our community that, you know, are locals, are pass holders. And like Chris, Chris is our, uh, local communications, um, <clears throat> local commu communications director for the show. Uh, he's like, I don't think that you should be able to get different parks in one day. And he's referring to being as an annual pass holder. But he says, I, but I do think we should get fast passes 90 days out once in a while. Or at least, Chris, I'll meet you halfway, even 60 days out with everybody else once in a while. Again, trying to set this up for some sort of equality. And I do think that annual pass holders, annual pass holders kind of get the shaft when it comes to like the locals who go every week, a couple times a week, even, you know, they, they almost are never able to get a fast pass, at least not for the eight, you no, know, not at least not for the e-ticket rides and at least not for very good times. And it's very difficult for them to do. So maybe there needs to be a need to balance some of those things out. That's a big thing. You know, Chris mentioned he went 158 days last year. On average, just doing some rounding, that's like every other day. That's pretty awesome. But it's one of those things. Now, let's see. Ryan also comments, don't get me wrong. I bought in for the resorts, but as a perk, they have discounts on AP, being DVC, and many other perks. I was just thinking what everybody else thought. See, the thing is, though, is that and, you know, I also kind of feel this way as a DBC member. I didn't buy in for the perks because I know that the perks change. There have been some really good perks that DBC used to have that they don't have anymore. Uh, things that I'm really kind of disappointed in, but they're perks. You don't buy for the perks. You know, those, that's pixie dust. You know, it's, it's really good pixie dust. So it's one of those things where, you know, you give it a try. But let's see. Like Maureen says, I think they should have special DVC entrance like AP holders. You know, the funny part is there have been annual pass holders that have said that it's actually sometimes taking them longer to get through those special um, AP holder lines than anything else. So I don't know. It's one of those things where catch 22. I just think they should have. A, I think I think do, do, do everybody one better. Make a line for people who are experienced at using the finger, uh, the finger scanner. That's, that's what I have to say. So let's see. Yeah. Chris says they don't police the AP line. Anyway, the line gets busier most days than the regular line. So it's, it's one of those cases where it hasn't really been a perk for people. Nobody talks about it. Nobody really talks about the AP line at much anymore. I, I mean, Chris has made his comments to me before on the side. But is it really a perk if it's not really being enforced? So, I don't know. What are some What are some of your thoughts about the fast passes and being an AP or DVC member? I want to hear from other people as well. I'll give a few minutes for people to go ahead and type in things, type type things in, because I know there's a little bit of delay before I actually get to see it. Um, but I do think it's an actual interesting question. I know that APs have this issue. Cast members even have this issue. I mean, they're not able to do, you know, they're, they're pretty much have to follow the same rules as everybody else. Um, you know, cast members are, are treated like guests when they go in. And so they have to actually do the same, the same types of things here. Um, let's see. Melissa says being a f local Florida resident, getting restaurant reservations for some popular places is hard to get most of the time. I agree, Melissa. I mean, but the thing of it is, here's the problem. And this is a big problem for, I think everybody, right? If you want to get dining set up at one of the more popular table service places, you need an ADR. Everybody knows this. Everybody gets theirs 180 days out. The biggest problem to it, though, is when they have 
a, like a free dining promotion. The biggest rule of thumb is that if you want to get the free dining promotion, especially if you get the standard Disney dining, you know, package, you have to get ADRs. You have to get them at 180 days because they will just be consumed by the time, you know, your trip actually comes if you try to wing it or if you try to do it at 60 days or even 90 days. It's a challenge for all of us. And yes, I know that sometimes, you know, being a Florida resident, you know, Disney dining is great. I mean, dining at Disney is fabulous. You know, there are some really good restaurants in there. Some might say it's overpriced. Well, you know what? Sometimes the experience is worth it. So I understand. I empathize with local AP holders that can't usually get into places. Some people say it's not really a problem if you're really flexible. Okay, fine. Great. But I think that's also kind of a challenge for people who are locals that want to enjoy. Uh, so we'll have to see how it goes. So if you would like, <clears throat> if, you're, if your cam and mic are working and you got a set of headphones on, go ahead and scroll up to the top. I'm actually going to pop the link right here in the comment section that is over on Facebook. I'm actually going to uh, put it up over here and on, on the um, YouTube page. Let me read some of the comments over here. Let's see. Um, Brian says, I disagree. Uh, I get amazing fast passes same day every time I go. Uh, if it's a time I want to still be around there, uh, if it's a time I want to still be around or can be there to use them is the hard part. See, that's the thing. Okay, so that's kind of a catch-22 comment. Yes, you can get fast passes, but can you get them for when you're going to be able to use them? That's, I mean, with a little bit of humor, I mean, if, if, you, if you get fast passes you can't use, then you have kind of a little bit of a conundrum. You know, you might as well not get them. Um, the hard part is being able to get fast passes same day or I'll say within a couple weeks even that will actually work with a particular person's visitation plans who, are, who is local. It's a little bit different. Brian also says the AP line is worthless. Only two tap, uh, tap styles so that uh, many who shouldn't use it uh, need to be talked through and the um, CMs not stop busy with them. 90% of the times I go, they aren't even open to use. Kind of makes you wonder if, if they're going to just kind of let it go by the wayside quietly. I mean, if if it seems like they're either letting people through who shouldn't be letting them through as, as annual pass holders, or if they're not even open, is it worth it? Of course, if they're not open because there's no line anywhere else, it doesn't make sense to man a um, tap style if it's, you know, if it's not going to be utilized, it just doesn't make sense. So we'll have to, uh, we'll have to see how it goes here. Okay. Well, you know what? Let's see how this works because I see that we have somebody waiting in our green room that, uh, is going to join us here. Let's see what he has to say. I believe this is Justin joining us. Justin, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing well. Thank you. Most excellent. Glad to, hey, you're coming in nice and clear. Glad you can join us. And you're out in Colorado, right? I am. I'm just north of Denver. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, I love Denver. That's a, that's pretty epic. So what can I do for you on this fine Tuesday evening? One of my biggest gripes with being an AP holder would be the fact that we have to pay for the photo pass for each person in our family. Ah, uh, okay. So, oh, okay. Because it automatically comes with the annual passes, uh, but you get no discount for the set for like subsequent annual passes, but yet each person still gets its own um, uh, memory maker package to go along with it. Is that kind of what you're saying? Uh-oh. I think we lost him. 
Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. Can you hear me now? I can. I'm getting double uh, sounds. Okay. Make sure you go ahead and mute your uh, mute your Facebook um, screen. That's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing the Facebook conversation, I think. Here we go. Yeah, a little bit live. Live. This is what happens when you broadcast there live. There we go. Oh, awesome. So you mainly because you're talking about, you know, Memory Maker is, is included in all annual passes, but you don't get a discount on subsequent annual passes that are within a single family. That, absolutely. I mean, if you think about it, you're paying, uh, what is $169 extra f- just for that photo pass. And you have a family of five. Not everybody has to have that included. Yeah, that's a really good point, and it, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily make sense. Although I do know that they kind of treat the the annual passes almost as, in, as pure individuals rather than some sort of a fl- uh, family uh, exactly. configuration. Which you know you would think, you know, if you're going to be buying annual passes for let's say a family of four, I mean, you're shelling out the amount of money that you can buy you know a cheap used car for. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you would think that they can cut you a break and say, especially, especially if a couple of them happen to be for kids, you know, let's say, you know, under 18, they're kids rather. I mean, I know that that's not what Disney considers to be a, a kid, but, um, you know, let, even if it was a child, it was under 10, uh, 10 and under, you know, it would be, make sense to not include memory maker and shave off even 50 bucks. I mean, something, you know. Yeah, but, I, would, I would, I have to agree with you there. Uh, if they were just to do something to, to help a family of five or even a family of four or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it is one of those cases. It's, you know, one of those, it's one of those cases. And, you know, like uh, Chris says, you know, the photo pass is only included in the gold and above, which, you know, isn't it one of those cases where if you're a, if you're an AP that really a local AP that really wants to get the most out of it anyway, you know, that's where they're going to get stuck. Obviously, if you, if you don't have, uh, if you don't have uh golden above, you know, it's not an issue anyway, but then you're also shaving yourself off a little bit when it comes to uh blackout dates and so on and so forth. True. Um, hey, you know what? Chris actually mentions this. I want to hear your two cents on it. Speaking of perks for APs, he basically says, I believe the Platinum Plus Pass should include either one Halloween party ticket or Christmas party ticket. Uh, he goes, the Universal Top Pass includes one free Halloween Horror Night ticket. And they had the Platinum Plus Pass for the past year and find out that we and found out that we didn't use the water park even once. So the only perk for us was no blockouts. He found out when his parents came over during Christmas that uh, that he'll never go to Disney at that time again in the future. So he went back to the Gold Pass anyway. Um, I mean, what do you think about adding perks like that to an annual pass holder, especially you as an annual pass holder that's able to go on a regular basis? Um, yeah, Chris, I would have to agree with that. Uh, the fact that uh, they already have so many different... Uh, aspects of special events and so forth they're making money regardless of uh, food souvenirs or whatnot Uh, it would be a nice little perk but i just don't ever see disney giving up the fact losing out on money Uh, you know you you can't really disagree with that in a way and I, i i do think that sometimes ap's do get you know some good perks but then again not as many as they have in the past. Um, Chris also made mention, I thought this was great. He just goes right around what you and I were just talking about. He's like, I'd like to see them offer a family annual pass for a flat rate that included four adult tickets and a certain extra price for a certain price. Yeah, a certain extra price for a certain price per person after four people. Okay, I can see that. So you basically you buy a family of four, a family pack, okay. and, and then you know, a guest, you know, another guest or another family member. And it's very similar how other people, other places have done it. In fact, as an example, I realize this is a totally different 
type of example, but I'm an annual pass holder for the Museum of Science and Industry downtown Chicago. Wonderful museum. My fellow Chicagoans know how awesome that place is. I, I, I'm a pass holder there, and it's really awesome. Uh, my annual pass includes, uh, you know, my whole family, and that if I wanted to, I can bring other people on for a discounted rate. And I think that's kind of what Chris is talking about, although it's like if you have a family of five, you know, maybe you get a discount for that fifth person in your family that would be included in your family pack of annual passes. Yeah, um, I definitely agree with that. Uh, Wendy made a good point, too, if you read there real quick. She'd like to see AP uh, holders be able to do the same type of payment plan as Florida residents. Oh, I, I agree. And, and you know, the, the, the interesting part to it is, is that um, it's really hard to shell out that kind of cash all at one time. And the payment plan part, I think, would actually make a lot of sense, in my opinion. Um, I think, uh, you know, even if you had to put half down, it would still help the whole financial situation. Um but it's it's not easy because you're spending you know if, when you're shelling out a couple grand, you know you're gonna do you either got to put that on a credit card and then pay interest on the credit card to do that sort of thing, or you got to have you know some Benjamins in order to do it. Well, for myself, since being a retired cast member, I've got my main gate. Sure. So that helps me out, but I still got to pay for my other family members, and that and we're heading down there this next week, and, that, and it's twenty seven hundred dollars. That I'll be forking out because it's time for our eight P's to be renewed. True, true. Now, Wendy also mentions a good one. You know, she's like, but I think DVC gets a discount, at least on the annual pass. And yes, but it's not like a gargantuan discount. I mean, we get basically very close to the annual pass holder rate for Florida residents. But, you know, that's still, and we, but we don't get the offer to, do payments on it. We just get a, a, a discounted rate and it's not a, right. it's not an insurmountable, you know, discount, but it's, it's just being able to pay for the tickets. I mean, you can discount anything if you, if, if they're still really expensive and you got to shell out a lot of money for that, um, for that, uh, uh, AP right off the bat anyway. I mean, it's still going to be a lot of money. So that makes a lot of sense though, Wendy. I appreciate that comment. Um, now, the thing is, though, is that Ryan also says you believe when, when you renew a DVC, it's cheaper than two. Well, you get a discount for renewing, but here's the catch, Ryan. The problem of it is, is that it's only going to make sense if you plan on using your AP very much perpetually. Like what we do, we'll get it for a trip that's a latter part of the year or a latter part of like when we usually vacation. And then we'll use it then and whenever else during the year. And then we'll make sure that our next trip kind of like butts up against oh, our date. Yeah, butts up against that date. So we actually get, you know, in essence, a, a good solid year out of it uh, and then not buy it until the following year. But, you know, again, that's how we do Disney. Everybody does Disney differently, as we say here on the show. Um, let's see if we have any additional. Oh, let's see. Yeah, Brian also mentions it's easy to not come back when distant uh, and annual uh, and annual passes or having annual pass if you're doing it monthly. Yeah, it's really hard. It's it's hard to. So it's like, you know, if you're doing if you're doing the annual passes and you're doing a monthly payment, you're probably not apt to use it. But if you if you have it burning it whole in your pocket, you know, that's just one of those things. So um, let's see here. Yeah, Wendy's basically saying he, she would like to see a, a payment plan for all. So um, what other kind of questions or comments do you have for us today, my friend? Uh, that's pretty much it. It was just uh, the deal on the photo passes and that. Um, I get a lot of grief about that and so forth. It'd just be nice not to have to pay for everybody since you already paid for it for the, the one family. Well, member. let me ask you this. Just kind of going down the photo pass tangent just for a second. I'm big into photography. I love getting a lot of pictures. In fact, uh, if people look over here, you know, see a lot of pictures flashed up on my, my, my computer behind me. 
Um, what do you, you what do you use your PhotoPass pictures for? Like, do you actually print them out? Do you put them on mugs, mouse pads, anything um, like that? Most of our most of our photos are taken of our granddaughter. Nah, and cool. That, and I had mentioned a while back when they were going to the stand still photos. And that, that um, you're going to lose a lot of that first reaction. Right. And that, so I'm kind of curious to see how that works this trip. And that, um, but if it doesn't work out, I might not just, I might not do the photo class again. And I'll just bring my camera myself and do it myself. <laughs> do it the right way. <laughs> do it the right way, yeah. No, I, I know. And in, in fact, um, our friend Jessica, when, when that whole uh, automatic picture box, so to speak, was first brought out. She was really upset with with due purpose as well because she just came back from a trip where the PhotoPass photographers were very interactive with her son. And it was one of those cases where, you know, they got him to smile and interact and just really had had him full of joy. And you couldn't have done that you know, you couldn't have captured those moments by, you know, any sort of artificial intelligence. Absolutely not. So it is definitely. We were at, we, were at, uh, we did uh, the princess run and I actually en- enrolled her in the diaper dash. <laughs> and, uh, and so she was in her Cinderella outfit and so forth. And Mickey was at one end of the little pads that they had a bracing on. And the photographer literally got down on his belly and was taking level shots oh, wow. of her. And you could see Mickey's hands reaching out to her and with a big smile. And that, and that's what's going to be lost. Uh, you know, there's something to be said about a photographer getting down at a child's level. You, you just can't beat it and it's and it's not like they're trying to do a trick shot they're actually getting down there and they are you know really making that shot happen and i i applaud photographers that have to take that kind of time they are adding magic to those guest experiences and i i really hope that um they still do that anywhere where they're taking pictures and um yeah, I, I just I, I know what I know what you mean. It's just one of those it's one of those cases. So well, I've been I've been fortunate enough to be on the character side where uh, I was helping with the characters and that, and you get a make a wish child come up. Yeah, you've just lost it. All it is is going to be a stand standalone, and that's it. When you should have a photographer roaming around from all directions. And getting that interaction shots. No, I totally get it, and I I do believe you're absolutely correct, Justin. Thank you so much for uh, joining us this evening. Really appreciate you hopping on, and I hope that you have an absolutely magical evening. You too. Thanks a lot. Take care. I always love it when we have people come on the show like that as an impromptu uh, guest. Uh, sometimes you have a few technical glitches. Yeah, that's okay. It's a live show. We're live. We're unscripted. We're unedited. We have fun with our community. That is exactly what we love to do. Um, so let's see here. <clears throat> let's see. Wendy actually continues the conversation and makes the comment. I think for many people, losing a photographer is not the way to go. The human touch is always better. Uh, I don't disagree. You know, to tell you the truth, <clears throat> I do think that there's there, automation's good for a lot of different things. Let's face it. I mean, it's it's one of those things that can happen, will happen, and it can be a lot of fun. Um, I do think that when you're talking with when you're talking with uh, guests and you're seeing the guests interacting with with the different characters, I really do truly believe that you have to you have to interact and you have to know how to frame that shot and. I love the photo photo pass photographers that really make that effort. You know, there was a time where pre-purchasing memory maker was a little bit of a, a pricey novelty in a way. And when we would tell 
the photographers that we actually prepaid for for PhotoPass uh, memory makers. Um, some of them would would go into like almost an instantaneous, hey, let's do a mini photo shoot. And they would go ahead and they would do a lot of really awesome things along those lines of a little mini photo shoot. And I, I just, it's just amazing. You can tell that they love their craft. They love that art of photography. And to me, that makes all the difference in the world. Even as a person who's an amateur photographer, you know, I love getting those shots that no one else thinks of. And they're sure, sure. There's a line 15 people deep. It's a little frustrating to see somebody, you know, want 45 different pictures. And I respect the fact that not every photo pass photographer has that kind of time. But sometimes you just got to say, Hey, can I get this one special shot? Absolutely. You know, I would like to think that the magic that do, they do for others, I hope they do for me too. And if not, that's okay. Because it's about being able to respect the guest's time and so on and so forth. I totally get it. Well, let's see here. Let's see here. I'm trying to make sure I hit everybody's questions or comments. And let's see. And unfortunately, it's one of those cases where the one thing I really miss about how we do this with both systems is I can't put comments on the screen yet. But that's okay. We're always working on new tech to make our live shows just that much better. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, there are a few things that we've got planned. And one of the things I can't wait to do is that our friend, Jessica, one of our, you know, associate community, uh, community coordinators, uh, she actually got to see Ron Logan tonight who is uh, basically a Disney legend in a way. I mean, he, and that's my term. I'm not sure if he's actually the designated as one, but she had the opportunity to see him over at Give Kids the World tonight. Uh, we were invited to go over there. And the first thing that she said as she walked out, she's like, that was awesome. And I can't wait to talk to Jessica about that. Uh, he had his hand in both the creation of Illuminations as well as Phantasmic. And I am, can't wait to hear the conversation that she had with him. So that is going to be on a future show. Oh, well, look at there. We've got another person. And of course, it is a great recurring friend of ours on the show. Brian, 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 Brian. How you doing, my friend? I figured I'd come say hi. Hey, hi. How you doing? Just working, by the way, because I, I set up this headset like 10 seconds ago because my mic's not set up at the moment. Yeah, you sound really good. You sound really good, as usual. So I was going to say, did you get some uh, sound padding behind you, too? Oh, there's all stuff all over here. Yeah. Hang on here. I can do get that. You got lights, microphone holder, and everything's here. Wow. And actually, you've never seen this. There's all my gear. Sheesh. Let's it's all over the place. You're you're a little bit more more organized than I am, even though uh, I've I've gotten yeah. more. Everything missing is the camera, which is here. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice, nice. So, how you been, my friend? I am good. I wanted to hop on real quick. Well, one because you're trying this, and I wanted to be good or successful for you. But um, the other side of things, I want to make a comment about the air conditioning. Okay, and go ahead. I, I don't get why everyone is worried about this. I, I don't. And I don't I, know I either. You, I can give you two examples for why not to worry about it. One is this is not the first hot temperature installation for this company it's the third these are already being used in over 100 degree beach settings yeah so there's already an example of it working in fact disney's looks like it'll be colder because they actually went higher in on the glass that repels heat but the other side of thing is you, nobody dies when you go through living with the land those are <laughs> greenhouses designed to trap heat in florida weather with no air conditioning <laughs> good. you're fine <laughs> that's a really good point i mean uh, yeah, sometimes you feel it, but it's also, you know, there's air circulating. It's meant to be a warm location and in some cases, you know, humidity controlled as well. Um, I think people are just generally concerned because a lot of people are, are really equating being outside in a box in, in, in like August in Florida 
I'm sure it's going to be warm, but like you said, there's going to be circulation. There's going to be that 10 to 15 mile an hour motion enabled breeze that you're going to get. I don't, I don't know if it's going to be as bad as people think it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be bad at all. And it, it's not going to be long. I mean, the, the Hollywood studios to Caribbean beach is a mile and a half, not mm. even. And I think it's like, you'll, to be, you'll like... be at the Caribbean beach before someone gets to their car to drive home to yeah. drive out of the parking lot. Yeah. So the I think it was slower. Where did I see? I saw something somewhere that said it may be like each segment is like six, seven minutes. I know I had put something together, but I didn't really measure it well because I didn't know exactly where the wires were going to be yet because sure. it was still a little early. But no, the the company that makes them, they have basically two ratings. One is rated for 11 miles an hour, which can go to higher wind gusts, which I'm assuming is the one Disney is going to use. I would assume that too. Um, and then the other one is up to 16 miles an hour, but it looked like it was a larger car. It was designed more for like a whole family, uh, like a whole ski trip going up a mountain size type car. So I don't think it's going to be the 16 mile an hour version. So 11 miles an hour, you only have to go one mile. I mean, that's what, four or five minutes at the most. And then, you know, yeah, so you'll be at Riviera in four or five minutes. You can see the Riviera through the trees now that it's been cut for the wires. <laughs> you don't, it, it's, it's closer than walking to boardwalk. It's just, there's a highway in your way. Yeah. I, I just don't think, I just don't think, um, it's going to be as I don't think it's going to be as big of a deal as people are really is that's really going to be and I and I th- now granted people who say they don't like heights that, oh, I completely get that yeah there's going to be yeah. some people that are just not going to be comfortable with it and if you've never been on a ski lift or anything there is kind of a bounce every time you hit a hit a tower and there's a lot of towers on this one because it's kind of lower to the ground than you'd expect you know it's surprisingly low to the ground I mean you're only talking about you know, 30 feet, maybe in some cases, me and my daughter were joking that I think if we brought one of my monopods, we could hit them as you leave the Epcot station <laughs> and we could play some pinata with them. <laughs> we're, we're sure, it, Cause it's it. I mean, I got to see it above, above me, but I'm looking at the wire and I'm like, I, I could hit that. That's funny. So, that... I mean, I think you're only going to be about 14, 15 feet in the air, like the bottom of the gondola. Yeah. If you're six foot and you have a six foot tripod, you can hit that. Small you know, jump. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, obviously there's going to be some, some peaks and valleys to, to the actual course that it's going to go. Mm-hmm. You know, there are going to be some parts where it's going to be a little bit higher, especially if you're going over the, over roads and things like that. Um, My understanding is the know. system can also drop all the cars to the ground in 30 seconds. Like the system actually has the slack to drop everyone down in an emergency. That makes sense. Which is which is also why they have to build a dock at Pop Century in case they have to rescue from the water. Above the water. There was no way for them to get to the line there. There was never a dock at that that Hourglass Lake. Okay. So there's now gonna be a dock at Hourglass Lake. So there might be fishing and some other stuff being added soon. I yeah. It sounds like a plan. I mean, I mean, I just, I think it's going to be kind of cool. I do realize there are people who are going to be really nervous about it. You know what? And that's fine. I totally respect it. Um, you know, some people, some people don't like to be on the, on watercraft because they get very seasick very easily, you know, type of thing. I, I get it. Everybody loves the monorail, you know, everybody, you know, this is one of those things. I'm not a big fan of the monorail. I know you're <laughs> that's not the one I don't really want to do. I kind of said that because I know you told me before in the past, I don't really care for the monorail. I got friends that are coming for the first time. I'm like, damn it, we got to ride the monorail. <laughs> At least I got it down because if you start a TTC, they can go through the building. That was cool. They can take the ferry back to get a boat ride and you're done. <laughs> you, you, all you have left is a bus and they don't want to ride a bus. They can do that at home. Oh, that's funny. I agree with that. Oh, that's funny. So um, let's see. Oh, you know, people are like, "Will it be like a ski lift where it has to keep stopping for people to get on and off?" I think if they do it the, the way that some do, they kind of put like a little bit of a neutral to it, where you have it's a, a it's a detachable it's a detachable gondola, meaning you can leave the wire, and it's it's a very long it it's if you actually go back and find some pictures, you'll see a very big circle near where the wire is, and that's where the wire turns and goes back. Yeah, but it's like five times longer for where you actually get on and off. 
and it looks like it could hold probably a good 50 cars. So you probably got a good three to four minutes to get off and four to five minutes to get on. Yeah, I, I mean, granted, getting off as briskly and safely as possible is probably the name of the game. But yeah, it's not going to be like a ski lift because I mean they are going to have they are going to be handicap accessible, so that's you kind of have to be able to stop the car. Then um, my understanding is this company has never built one where they ever completely stop moving, but I think Disney's is going to be the exception. I think they're going to have like little zones where they can stop. Because I, I, Disney, yeah. Disney being so handicap friendly, and it would make sense. I mean. I realize there are some places where, you know, they would have like a moving walkway to get in and out or it's moving really slow, walkways really slow. And it's kind of like an mm-hmm. omni mover type of thing. But yeah, you're not going to be able to do that when you're trying to get a, a scooter or a wheelchair. Um, One thing I can't tell is do I have to get out at Caribbean Beach? Because it's three different lines that come together. Is it one? Do they have the ability to say, hey, we're going to Epcot and just send you right over to Epcot? Or do you have to get out and get back online? Kind of like what you had to do when you want to switch from the uh, Magic Kingdom track, the monorail, to go over to the uh, Epcot track. Right, but it's a whole big system, and that's like where their storage yard is. So it's making me think it might be a series of things they can switch. So like you a, don't necessarily have to get off, but they, they, you're going to need to know that you're not getting off. Or kind of, yeah, going. yeah, like if they throw a little flag on the outside saying, you know, direct line to Epcot or something like that. Yeah, uh, you know, that's going to be my question because they all go to Caribbean Beach. That make, that's a good question. I think that's that'd be really cool to see how they actually do that because um, you would think that you can do that. Here's the thing. If I have to get off in the middle and then get back in line, that's going to stink. Yeah, because it's, it's basically, it's going to be Hollywood. You, you go through Riviera to Caribbean Beach. I don't really understand why they made it. It's not really on next to Riviera. <laughs> It's it's in a weird spot that it's it's going to be kind of a walk for Riviera. So I don't I'm not really I kind of get it because it's actually all on the it's on the do you know where Trinidad North and South is? Mm-hmm. The big station is closer to there. Oh, um, the small okay. station is um, I don't know this. You know you know like you have like Jamaica and then I forget what's next to it that disappeared for Riviera. But it's like yeah. literally right on top. If you're staying if you're staying in Jamaica and you get that end room. You can probably look at them through your window getting on and off. <laughs> it's that close to Caribbean Beach. Um, and then they also made the lake bigger. They they reshaped it for where the Riviera is. So it, it's actually a bigger lake now. Oh, okay. Um, it's it's not as noticeable at first, but then you said they're going, like, wait, there weren't all those rocks there before. And it, they, they kind of they uh, did a big change in that area. That should be really interesting to see how that looks once everything is done between the hotel and... The Skyliner, I think that's going to be really neat to see how they've kind of reimagined that whole, the whole uh, uh, landscape, for lack of a better way of putting it, of that resort in and of itself. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how it works out. I'm really looking forward to Coronado Springs more, I think. Oh, I am too. It's a huge tower. It's going to have more meeting spaces and stuff, so I can see more special events happening there. Um, But... I love the new restaurant that they're really far ahead on in the middle of the lake. So for the first time, you don't have to walk around the lake. You, <laughs> you can just cut right past the restaurant in the middle. And I think that's why they built it. And from what I understand, it's just a rumor. So don't, don't hold anyone to anything. I think that's what's going to happen to the World Showcase Lake also. It looks like they're getting ready to put more walkways and possibly set up um, the African Outpost to finally be that third entrance because without illuminations, you don't have to walk past all the fireworks and the big giant ball that might blow up on you. They've always wanted to put a third entrance step got to Caribbean beach where you would walk it. Cause it's only a quarter mile. It's literally just across the, the highway there. It's much closer than anyone thinks. That would be interesting. That would, I mean, that would really, that would change some things over at Epcot. That's for darn sure. Yeah, but you can literally walk from Caribbean Beach to Hollywood Studios, especially if you can walk across the middle of the lake. And they did kind of because it looks like they're making a peace sign in the lake yeah. from the blue the blue sky drawing. Mm-hmm. And a lot of this is because of the blue sky drawing. It's but the rumor is kind of that that's why the show's changing. And 
they have to stop the fireworks in the lake in order to build that because they can't build it while there's fireworks shooting around them. So that's why Illuminations is going to get a temporary, not much pyro show not for a year. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Not much pyro show. And, and you know, chances are, you know, they'll probably do something. I, I'm going to use the term like in an incorrect manner here. They're going to probably do something that was very similar to like rivers of light or even the one that was before that over at animal kingdom that was with the jungle brook, the jungle book, uh, show, which I liked, but, um, yeah. Well, it, I liked it, it once I knew what it was, not, they didn't set it up well. No. But once, once you realize it was live music with live singers, you could then find the live singers cause they were just too far away. Otherwise yeah. to figure out what was happening. Oh, I totally agree. Well, that sounds really cool. Well, Brian, we're going to go ahead and uh, end here. I'm going to go and put you in the green room, but why don't you hang out for a minute? Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, Brian. I really appreciate you joining us. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. So listen, we're going to go ahead and we're going to call this show a wrap. But before we do, I need to press this button right here. heard the show and we hope you want more well feel free to join us over at our social media platforms instagram and our facebook page can be found at behind the ears podcast our web page is behind the ears podcast.net and our email is behind the ears podcast at gmail.com and our twitter handle is at behind the ears pc and come and join the conversation about all things disney over at the wdw community page don't forget to rate and review the show over at itunes or apple Podcasts, as it really helps us get the word out about the show also, don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes or Apple Podcasts or the Podbean app. Also, you can listen to us on Stitcher Radio, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and via Alexa and Google Home. All righty, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on this solo episode, a Chris-only episode of the Behind the Ears podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. We really do appreciate it. Hey, you know what? We would love to hear your questions, comments, feedback, even uh, suggestions for the show over at behind yours podcast at gmail.com or bounce us a note over at the behind yours podcast, Facebook page. We do monitor those quite regularly and we would love to hear what kind of feedback you have to say, your questions, your comments, your show, your uh, show requests. Love to hear it. We are so grateful for all of you, and we are just loving doing this for you. But I'll tell you what, until we meet again, I hope everybody has an absolutely magical day. Take care.